Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. I once again welcome you to MSP lecture series on main group chemistry. Uh, in my previous uh, lecture, I was discussing about molecular orbital. While discussing molecular orbital theory, I wrote a general MO diagram for second row diatomic molecules for oxygen, fluorine and neon. Let me write now MO diagram for beryllium, carbon and nitrogen dimeric species that is B2, C2 and N2. Since I am going to compare the MO diagrams for diatomic molecules such as O2, F2 and Ne2 with B2, C2 and N2, let me write the MO diagrams uh, for both here so that comparison becomes much easier. So, here in this case the lower energy one will be sigma 2 p, then we have pi 2 p and then pi 2 p pi star 2 p and then sigma star 2 p. Okay. So, and then of course, we have 2 electron uh, in 2 s orbital that also should be considered. This is sigma 2 s anti bonding and sigma 2 s bonding. So, like this we can write this is for 2 s this for 2 s and this is for 2 p and this for 2 p. So, this is how uh, one can write MO diagram, this is atomic orbital and this is atomic orbital. This represents the diatomic species O2, F2 and Ne2. They exist or not that is a different issue, but one can write MO diagram in this fashion and keeping the energy of this in this order. Okay. So, let me write now for uh, carbon, boron and nitrogen. Now, little changes will be there, just remember here sigma 2 is the lower whereas here pi will be lower, pi 2 p will be lower and then sigma comes, sigma 2 p and then as usual here no change, A pi star 2 p will be essentially same and here it is sigma star 2 p. You can connect now. Okay, this is 2 p, this is 2 p. There is no change in the 2 s uh, combination. This is 2 s, this is 2 s again this is, these are all atomic orbitals. This is molecular orbital for diatomic species. Okay. So, now you can see the difference. Uh, here in this case uh, pi 2 p 
is much lower in energy compared to sigma 2 p. Whereas, in these cases okay, that means, in the heavier or more electronegative elements in the second row, okay, the energy due to sigma 2 p will be lower compared to pi 2 p. Whereas, in the same row group 13, 14, 15 elements, we have a opposite situation here pi 2 p will be lower in energy compared to sigma 2 p. Let us look into it why that happens. Before I proceed for that one, I pose a question here. Okay. So, that is we can explain the bonding properties of uh, molecules or spe ionic species. Okay. For example, let me consider N 2 and N 2 plus and O 2 and O 2 plus and let me look into the bond energy associated with these species and also the bond length that is N n bond length or O over bond length in these species. And let us try to understand from molecular alpha diagram how to okay, explain these properties. First let, let me write for N 2 of course, now I am not going to write you know the order. So, simply I let me write in the order here sigma 2 s and then sigma star 2 s and then I have pi 2 p and then sigma 2 p. Okay and then pi star pi star 2 p and then sigma star 2 p. Okay. So, this is for N 2 I am writing and N 2 we have total of 10 electrons in this valence shell that is 1 s 2, 2 s 2, 2 p 3. So, we have totally 5 electrons from each nitrogen. So, we have 10 electrons those 10 electrons have to be filled here 2 electrons will go here and 2 electrons will go here and 2 will go here and 2 will go here now 2 4 6 8 and this is it. So, this is how you can show the filling order for N 2 and of course, if N 2 if I consider here uh, between these okay, we have 6 electrons I can cal calculate the bond order this is for N 2 bond order equals 6 minus 0 by 2 equals 3. So, that means, the bond order is 3 that indicates there exists 3 bonds between 2 nitrogen atoms. Okay. So, now let us look into N 2 plus N 2 plus. So, N 2 plus we are having 1 electron less. Okay. So, here we have 10 electrons, 10 electrons we have in this case. 10 electrons and then here we have 9 electrons. So, in the same fashion I will start writing the uh, molecular orbital. Let me start filling now these 9 electrons, 2 electrons here, 2 electrons here, 1, 2 electron and 2 electron and here 1 electron because n 2 plus 1 is n 1 is n plus that means 1 nitrogen comes with 1 s 2 2 s 2 2 p 3 electrons that is n n plus comes with 1 s 2 2 s 2 2 p 2 electron. So, we have total of 9 electrons these 9 electrons have been placed here in this fashion ok 1. So, 1 electron here so total we have 9 electrons. So, now if you look into the bond order equals 5 minus 0 by 2 is, is equals to 2.5. So, here the net bonding is we have a 2.5 we cannot write fractional bond, but we can say bond is weaker. Okay. Similarly, I can write for O2 here O2 and O2 you should notice the difference this is essentially same. Okay. And next we have these two are same 1 s 2 s 2 2 s 2. Now, we have sigma p here comes and then pi comes here and this does not change. 
and this is how it is. So, now let me write them this is sigma 2 s this is sigma star 2 s and then here sigma 2 p pi 2 p pi star 2 p and sigma star 2 p. So, now in case of oxygen we have 1 s 2 2 s 2 2 p 4. So, so total we have 12 electrons we have a total of 12 electrons. So, these 12 electrons I will start placing here 2 here 2 here 2 here 6 8 10 and 1 electron here. Okay. So, that means 2 unpaired electrons are there because of this one you can say clearly oxygen is paramagnetic and it has 2 unpaired electrons. So, one can calculate the magnetic moment mu using square root of 2 s into s plus 1 uh, formula and this clearly indicates why O2 species is paramagnetic and here if you look into the bond order we have here 2 plus uh, 6, 6 are there 6 minus 2 equals 4 by 2 that means the bond order is 2 that indicates we have double bond between 2 oxygen atoms. So, verification is correct. Now, let me write the MO diagram for O2 plus. O2 plus we have 1 electron less. Okay, so, let me start filling here. Here we have uh, 2 oxygen atoms are there, 1 is oxygen with 1 s 2 2 s 2 2 p 4 electronic configuration, another one is O plus with 1 s 2 2 s 2 2 p 3 electronic configuration. So, we have 1 electron less. Let me start filling them in the same order. So, they cancel each other, they are 4 electrons now. Now, you look into here 2. So, 2, 2 here. So, we have added 10 electrons the last electron will come here. So, O2 plus species is, is also paramagnetic whereas, here the bond order if I calculate here bond order equals 6 minus 1 by 2 it is equal to 2.5. So, that means bond is stronger this is stronger the bond order increases. So, O2 plus will be much more stable compared to O2. Okay. So, now we wrote here this uh, MO diagram and we know uh, the stability using this one. With this let us look into the bond parameters I, I told you. What are those bond parameters for bond energy? I am writing in kilojoules per mole and also I am writing bond length in picometers okay. n 2 and n 2 plus and then O 2 and O 2 plus. Let us compare these parameters now. Let me start writing the values it is 945. So, kilojoules per mole and for this one 841 and then 498 and then 623 and bond length this is 110 picometer and here it is 1112 and here it is 121 whereas here 112. Okay. So, now hmm, we have to explain I already showed you uh, the MO diagram for N2, N2 plus, O2 and O2 plus. In case of N2 bond order let me write here bond order in a case of N2 it is 3, in, in case of this one it is 2.5, in case of this one it is 2, this one 2.5. That means here uh, strong bond, 3 bonds are there weak and this is relatively if I say this is weak this is strong 
Okay. So, this information has come from molecular orbital diagram simply by writing. Now, if I compare you see 945 kilo joules per mole and bond length is shorter because you have bond order 3 a triple bond exists between n and n and its bond energy is 945 kilo joules per mole actually single bond uh, n n bond energy is 160 kilo joules per mole. It is more than 3 times that is the reason it is more stable of course, I will be giving you more details when I discuss the chemistry of group 15 elements uh, and then the bond length is 110 picometer. Now, N 2 plus you can see bond order is 2.5 that means bond order is reduced that means it is relatively weak compared to N, N 2 that is reflected in its bond parameter 112 okay, little longer 112 picometer and whereas, its bond energy has dropped from 945 to 841 kilo joules per mole and same analogy can be extended between O2 and O2 plus. In case of O2, uh, the bond energy is 498 kilo joules per mole and here bond distance is 1 to 1, 121 picometer and bond order is 2. Now, when one electron is removed from anti-bonding orbital okay, and now the bond energy increases considerably from 498 to 623 kilo joules per mole and as a result uh, the net increase in the bond order is from 2 to 2.5 as a result the oxygen atoms come very close to each other O and O plus come very close to each other as a result the bond distance shrinks and it is now 112 picometer that means the bond distance in case of N 2 plus as well as O 2 plus are essentially same. So, you can see how some of these properties can be readily explained simply by drawing the MO diagram and also the reactivity all those things one can extrapolate and understand better by practicing and knowing the MO diagrams for most of the molecules we come across. Okay. So, let us look into uh, some heteronuclear diatomic molecules. Okay. So, heteronuclear diatomic molecules it will be little different. What we should know is we should know the relative electronegativity of the two atoms that are combining to make a diatomic species. Uh, for example, let me consider HF. Okay. Uh, this always one should remember to write. So, let me put one S here, this is coming from atomic orbital of hydrogen. Now, if you look into the electronegativity difference between hydrogen and fluorine, there is a remarkable difference is there. So, energy of 2 p orbital that is going to combine with 1 s atomic orbital will be much lower in energy. So, this will be somewhere here. So, this is 2 p and uh, we have 5 electrons. Okay, electronic configuration of fluorine is 1 s 2, 2 s 2, 2 p 5. So, it is in need of one electron to complete its octet. So, it combines now, when it combines uh, it generates 3 plus 1, 4 atomic orbitals are combined to generate 4 molecular orbitals. Out of this one, one is bonding here, this is sigma and then here this is essentially non bonding because uh, for one let us say 2 p z interacts with 1 s atomic orbital to form sigma bond remaining 2 p x and 2 p y we do not have corresponding atomic orbitals from hydrogen as a result they do not combine with any of the atomic orbitals we can think of with hydrogen they remain just non bonding. So, essentially they remain as non bonding here. That is the reason there is no net change in the energy compared to the free fluorine atom. And then here we have sigma star. Of course, I did not write here. So, here two electrons are there and this is essentially uh, 2 p x 2 p y that means p z is combined with this one 
this is sigma sigma star and this these are essentially non bonding molecular orbitals atomic orbitals of fluorine and molecular orbital of H of. So, this is how one can write the molecular orbital diagram for heteronuclear diatomic molecule. Here one should remember the electronegativity of 1s is remarkably less compared to the electronegativity of 2p. They have much more lower energy. So, that when you are writing you should write in this fashion. Always most electronegative elements have lower energy for the corresponding atomic orbitals and we have a situation something like this. And here 2 electrons are there and 2 p z combines with 1 s to form a sigma bonding molecular orbital where 1 electron from this one, 1 of the electron from fluorine will be residing to generate bonding molecular orbital. And then the 2, 4 electrons from p x and p y do not have corresponding atomic orbital from hydrogen. So, they remain non bonding molecular orbital and net number of molecular orbitals are still same here 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. That means that balancing should be there. Um, so, this is the simplest molecule you can think of uh, as an example of heteronuclear diatomic molecule and uh, one can extrapolate this one to other molecules as well. So, let us try to write for another diatomic molecule heterodinuclear di heteronuclear diatomic molecule such as lithium fluoride. So, lithium fluoride case is also very similar. We have 1 s 2 2 s 1 electron and this electron combines with 1 s 2 2 s 2 2 p 5 atomic orbital to generate okay, bonding. We just see whether we have non bonding also similar to H f. So, this is uh, 2s and here it is 2s and then 2p two 2p two and now here since we do not have the corresponding 2 u. So, this also remain as non bonding and then we have sigma sigma 2 p or simply sigma and then this is 2 s sigma 2 s and then this one remain non bonding and then we have sigma here. So, that means essentially very similar to what happened in case of fluorine lithium uh, hydrogen fluoride. So, this is sigma star. So, here in this case if we consider uh, atomic orbital of lithium, atomic orbitals of fluorine and lithium fluoride. So, lithium fluoride you can explain. So, since 2 s do not have the corresponding low energy, so it remains as non bonding. So, both of these are essentially non bonding MOs. Okay. So, here whereas this one here essentially one of the 2 p orbital that is preferably 2 p z combines with 2 s to generate sigma where these two electrons are. These two electrons are responsible for making lithium fluoride. For example, these three pairs remains non bonding and of course, one can go to this uh, Lewis dot structure you can see here. Okay. So, these three pairs whatever is there that represented here. Okay. Six, so, one is this pair another these two pairs that means, three pairs can be seen here and this whatever is there the sigma 2 p that is responsible for making this bond. So, that means, we, we can take some hint from lithium fluoride Lewis dot structure and from there we can see we have three pairs of electrons are there it has the S 2 p 6 now. These three pairs are essentially non not at all interacting with lithium and they are here they remain as non bonding that means, some clue can be taken from uh, valence bond theory 
as well as uh, uh, Lewis dot structure when we are writing YAMO diagram and they can be verified. So, once if you are familiar with uh, writing YAMO diagram for heteronuclear diatomic molecules, you should be able to write for any complicated molecule by considering ligand group orbitals. So, this is a uh, let me write a general YAMO diagram here before I conclude this talk. So, this is about 2 s ok. Of course, here it is sigma and sigma star 2 s. Then we consider p, p and here it can interchange ok. So, here it is essentially 2 p z and here it is 2 p x and 2 p y ok same thing here and, and here it is pi and sigma and pi star and sigma star and here it is 2 p z and here 2 p x 2 p y. Of course, I have just considered 2 p situation one can also write 3 p and all those things. Okay, so, if it is x atomic orbital and atomic orbital of uh, another x here it is m o of x 2. So, this is how one can write of course, this will change depending upon the electronegativity of the combining atoms. So, in my next lecture I would uh, try to make you familiar with little more complicated molecules. So, have a pleasant reading thank you very much. Vayam Prabha, Digital India, Educated India.